Thanks for watching County Report This Week. I'm Susan Kennedy. This week, our county was the venue for the official announcement of a new initiative by the Department of Justice. High-ranking federal officials, including Vice President Joe Biden, were here in Montgomery to unveil the plan. Lorna Virgili was at the event. Lorna? Susan, it was a visit by Vice President Joe Biden here to the executive office building where he announced new initiatives to deal with domestic violence. No man has a right to raise a woman, his hand to a woman for any reason at all, for any reason at all other than self-defense. There is never, never, never a justification. Alongside no Attorney General wear, Eric Holder, no Vice wear, President Biden no announced an initiative that would disperse $2.3 million in grants to 12 programs across the country to domestic reduce domestic violence, violence homicides. homicides. Similarly, here in Maryland, the Lethality Assessment Program has enabled law enforcement to identify over 25,000 high danger victims of domestic violence. Now, more than half of them have spoken on the phone with domestic violence hotline workers. Nearly a third have sought further assistance from domestic violence programs, and not a single one of them, not a single one of them has been seriously injured or killed. Thanks to initiatives like this one and the hard work of countless public service and victim advocates, Maryland has witnessed a decrease of more than one-third in intimate partner homicides over the past five years, at a time when some states are reporting record spikes in domestic violence murders. The new domestic violence prevention demonstration initiative will help states and local jurisdictions to reduce homicides by identifying potential victims and monitoring high-risk offenders. The announcement was made in Montgomery because the new national initiative is modeled after existing programs in Maryland, which include the Family Justice Center in Montgomery County. It's about better collaborations, taking better actions together, elevating the intelligence of the systems that we have put in place to protect uh, women and uh, all people against domestic violence and also to um, and and also to really share information in ways that technology makes possible now that we could never have dreamed of being able to do in such a timely fashion even as as few as 7 or 8 years ago the initiative will focus on recognizing women who may be in abusive relationships once these at risk victims are identified law enforcement and service providers will take further action to protect them. The one-year awards range from $100 to $200,000, and Montgomery County will not be a recipient. In Rockville, for County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Virgili. County leaders are keeping a close eye on Annapolis and efforts to prioritize transportation funding. Governor Martin O'Malley has proposed a plan that includes an increase in the gas tax and other measures to raise new money for transportation. Overall, it's estimated the plan would create $3.4 billion for highway and transit projects. Council members gave us an update on the bill's progress. You know, for Montgomery County, obviously, this is what we've been asking for, um, even though it doesn't raise completely the amount that we need, it really does go a long way. And, um, and in order for us to move forward with these uh, transportation infrastructure projects, we really do need to do this now. I know that, you know, it's difficult. I mean, nobody really wants to have to increase um, any kind of uh, tax on uh, gasoline. Um, but the reality is that, you know, we're going to have to pay a little bit more, whether it's, you know, 10 cents more for a gallon. Uh, at the end of the day, in the long run, um, this is going to help us move forward with uh, new Aubrey development projects, our uh, future transportation uh, infrastructure uh, that I think everybody appreciates. Also this week, release of a report to improve the council's understanding of the achievement gap in Montgomery County, its magnitude, and the progress that has been made to narrow that gap since the original study. Councilmember Valerie Irvin gave us her thoughts on what the report revealed. There were some indicators that were very troubling in terms of where the gap got wider, because it did get wider. And it got wider among seven, uh, the seven keys they're known as uh, at MCPS. And those are the, the uh, indicators for whether or not uh, young people would be going on to college. So they, they um, tracked like um, algebra by eighth grade and, and all those indicators that should have been 
closed, we, in our opinion, those were where the gaps got wider. And so we're going to be asking a lot of questions of the uh, school system and the Board of Education moving forward. Um, how are you going to spend those resources that you get from the council to begin to really focus on these gaps? Spring break is just around the corner and thanks to daylight savings time, there are now more sunny hours in the day to enjoy being out and about in Montgomery County. My MC Media Sonia Burke reports that the recent spring light weather was a plus for some local area businesses too. Sonia? Spring is in the air at the Washingtonian Center and when it's this nice outside, it's just hard to stay indoors. If I have a chance to get outside, then we'll be outside. <laughs> It's a beautiful day and uh, I'm enjoying the weather and uh, I feel like it's early spring, so I'm excited. Local merchants tell us this spring-like weather is also good for business. It's very nice when the weather is nice because we definitely see an increase in business. The area's wildlife are out and about, seemingly enjoying the winter warm-up as much as the people walking by. I saw the ducks, the goose and the people and everybody's excited and in a, in a good mood, so. That's, that's what I noticed. Today I saw they're bringing out the, um, the paddle boats, which I'm sure they weren't here last time I ran. Um, and I saw them coming down, carrying them from uh, the parking lot down there, and then paddling them over here. So it looks like, uh, I guess they're not waiting till spring. It's very popular between the past few years. It's really picked up in business, and a lot of families have been coming out. It's $15 for the blue boats, and it's $20 for the white swans and all the character boats. And it takes about a half an hour to go all the way down the lake and come back around. It's a good time. A good time to take a walk, visit the playground, check out the flowers, or go shopping. And although there still may be a chill in the air, we couldn't leave without asking, what's going to be hot this spring? Color is very, very um, big this season. Um, the neons are back, um, lots of oranges and floral prints, and just anything with color. In Gaithersburg, for County Report This Week, I'm Sonia Burke reporting. Still to come on County Report this week, a group of Montgomery County students are led in story time by some educational leaders. And Montgomery College is recognized for its work with the homeless when County Report this week continues. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> Now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics, such as clamshells, Nelly containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. To get information or report an emergency in Montgomery County, do you know the right numbers to call? Montgomery County 311. I need a new recycling bin. Call 311 for county information and services. Montgomery County Police. My car was broken into last night. Call 301-279-8000 for crime-related non-emergencies. Montgomery County 911. I just saw a car crash. That's an emergency. Help us get help to you. Call 911 only for a real emergency. Welcome back to County Report This Week. Well, daylight saving time is upon us, which means folks who are out there traveling in the early hours of the morning need to use extra caution. Officer Rebecca Innocenti is here from Montgomery County Police, and she's here to tell us what folks need to remember when they're traveling when it is so dark out there early in the morning. Thank you, Susan. That's correct. It's darker for a longer period of time in the morning. For pedestrians, please wear reflective clothing or some type of light color clothing so people can see you in the morning. Also, cross in designated crosswalks and be mindful of those hand signals that tell you when it's safe to cross the street and when it's not safe to cross the street. And don't be a distracted pedestrian or bicyclist. Take those earbuds out of your ears. Also, stay off your cell phone and stop texting. Just know that you got to get to point A to point B and be aware of your surroundings. And for motorists, again, don't be a distracted motorist. Turn that radio down, stay off your cell phone, and know that there's going to be students headed to school and people headed to work, people at bus stops. We just want to keep motorists and pedestrians safe on the roadways. Always good information. Thanks so much for bringing it back to us once again. Officer Rebecca Innocenti, Montgomery County Police. 
U.S. Secretary of Education Arne Duncan and U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services Kathleen Sebelius visited Rolling Terrace Elementary School recently to highlight the importance of early childhood education and to celebrate National Read Aloud Day. The story now from our friends at MCPS TV. Hi. MCPS is building the foundation for student success through its early childhood programs and services. The impact of these programs was on full display when the U.S. Secretaries of Education and Health and Human Services paid a special visit to MCPS. Do you like green eggs and ham? Education Secretary Arne Duncan, Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius gathered with other dignitaries to highlight high-quality early childhood learning programs. Try them, try them. and you President Obama made expanding early childhood education a key part of his recent State of the Union address. Dramatically expanding high-quality early learning is absolutely a win-win proposition. And this is absolutely one of the best investments that we can make collectively. The first few years of a child's life are the most critical. We have a moral and economic imperative to ensure that no child has fallen behind by the first day of kindergarten. MCPS provides extensive early childhood learning services to more than 5,000 students. These services include full day and half day Head Start programs, pre-K classes, and special education services. Early childhood education works, right? The data are really, really clear. When kids are exposed to high quality pre-K, that's engaging, that's fun, that attends to their social emotional needs, as well as their academic needs, that works with families. Children are exposed that do better in life. Rolling Terrace Elementary School is home to one of two Judy Centers in MCPS. Judy Centers are state and locally funded early childhood and family learning centers that provide comprehensive services to children from birth through age five. It's really important for our children to get off to a strong start, to have foundational skills um, that they need to be successful academically, but also those social skills and other emotional competencies that they need to be successful and to interact with others and to collaborate. This model can be transferred to any community, um, but just tweaked a little so that you're meeting the needs exactly of your students and your parents. Montgomery College has won the Montgomery County Coalition for the Homeless Distinguished Partner Award. Here with more of that story is Stan Jones from MCTV. With the theme, There's No Place Like Home, the Montgomery County Coalition for the Homeless awarded Montgomery College the Distinguished Partner Award at the Coalition's 2013 gala event. Uh, Montgomery College reached out to us because of the engagement of Montgomery College with the community and the issues that the community faces. We've had a wonderful partnership with Montgomery College. Montgomery College has a rich uh, tradition of working uh, with uh, the Coalition for the Homeless uh, on uh, various issues, uh, including the Help for the Homeless Walkathon, uh, the uh, My Best. Uh, apartment maintenance initiative and also the back to work program for the men's shelter. Last year through partnerships and contributions the Montgomery County Coalition for the Homeless helped 1500 men, women and children maintain stable or in some cases permanent housing. We have so many people in our community unfortunately who are homeless who really need a home and the theme there is no place like home we all know that and tonight we can really help make a difference. This county can do something that maybe no other place in the country can. You can actually end homelessness here. You know, we don't, it's not like we have too many people to serve, and it's not like we, have, we don't have enough people who have the means to serve. Montgomery College, known as the Communities College, a resource for the community, was given the award for their outstanding commitment in supporting the effort to end homelessness in Montgomery County. Uh, provide educational opportunities, educational excellence, and also student success, but also to be a resource for the entire community. It's something that Dr. Pollard stresses, uh, and uh, the recognition by the uh, Coalition for the Homeless tonight underscores that point. For County Report this week, I'm Stan Jones. Dozens of Montgomery County residents turned out for a community meeting at the Silver Spring Civic Building at Veterans Plaza. My MC Media's Sonia Burke reports these meetings help residents stay connected and informed. We're supposed to have five events. So far we've had two. 
These young Montgomery County residents are addressing advisory board members about the need to find a downtown Silver Spring location for upcoming Teen Jam events. They want a place where young musicians and performers can showcase their talents in front of an audience of their peers. We look forward to working with you to try to, to figure this out, so let us know what more we can do. Next up, the board welcomes Economic Development Steve Director welcome. Steve Silverman, who provided an overview of Montgomery County's economic scene. Along with facts and figures, he shared some local success stories. We managed to keep uh, social and scientific systems in downtown Silver Spring. That's 300 employers. We've supported United Therapeutics plans to tear down a, a public parking garage, which we sold them and put up a new building. Uh, so they'll be able to expand their campus. That's important retention and expansion of jobs in downtown Silver Spring. What do you think of the economic development in the area? Uh, I think it's moving along very nicely. I've seen a huge amount of progress in the last uh, decade that I've been down here. The county is also improving its approach when it comes to working with companies who want to do business here. It's going to be very important to provide certainty uh, to companies uh, that want to do projects here in the county that they can get through our process um, without uh, waiting years. It's been an impediment in the past. The county executive and council are committed uh, to uh, balancing community concerns with an expedited process and I think you're going to see some great uh, results. Up next, another in our Heritage Montgomery Civil War moments. This time, a look at the aftermath of one of the war's most costly battles. When County Report This Week continues. If it wasn't for his doctor, he wouldn't be here. If it weren't for Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, he wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the phone call, we wouldn't have been there. If I didn't call, I don't know where we would be. Montgomery County emergency responders are there when you need help at no cost to you. In an emergency, don't ever hesitate to call 911. If you live in Montgomery County, you will never get a bill or pay a dime. So if you have an emergency, call us. We're, We're there, there for you. you. Welcome back to County Report. It's time for another Heritage Montgomery Civil War moment. We left off last time with the Battle of Antietam. We pick up now with that battle's aftermath. While there was not a clear winner at Antietam, Lincoln claimed victory once Robert E. Lee retreated. The immediate threat to the northern states was over. Politically, the Battle of Antietam was an important turning point of the war, but it is most remembered for the savage fighting resulting in so many dead and wounded. Nearly three quarters of Antietam's 23,000 casualties were wounded soldiers who needed medical attention. Even while the battle was going on, nurses, doctors, and volunteers from the nearby towns came forward to offer care. An ambulance corps was organized and methods for managing casualties were developed. One volunteer present on that horrific day was Clara Barton. Known as the Angel of the Battlefield, Miss Barton worked tirelessly, comforting the men and assisting the surgeons. In later years, Clara Barton would create the Red Cross and move to Montgomery County. Her Glen Echo home was the organization's first headquarters. Most of Antietam's wounded received immediate medical care in makeshift hospitals set up in the towns surrounding Sharpsburg. However, communities farther afield also lent a hand. Here in Rockville, a hospital was set up in the town's courthouse. Dr. Edward Stone Street was put in charge of this 350-bed facility. There, he oversaw the care of soldiers wounded at Antietam. Many say that techniques learned during the Civil War gave birth to modern medicine. Today, Dr. Stone Street's one-room office serves as a museum to 19th century medicine. While not a stunning victory for the Union, the Battle of Antietam did repel the Confederate Army. Lincoln decided to act. Five days after the battle, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which was adopted on the first day of January, 1863. 
This important document substantially expanded the character of the war to include freedom for all. For County Report This Week, I'm Barbara Grunbaum. For more on the Civil War here in Montgomery County, visit heritagemontgomery.org. It's time now for Tom Pogue with our transportation update. This week, information on the Metro Branch Trail and pathways to the Silver Spring Transit Center. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update from Montgomery County. In January, a portion of the Metropolitan Branch Trail at the Silver Spring Metro Station was opened to enhance pedestrian accessibility around the transit center and reestablish a path from the northbound Mark train platform. The new trail portion extends from the south end of the train platform to the plaza in front of the Metro Station. This winter, weather permitting, the trail will be extended to Ripley Street. Another project is planned that will extend the trail from the transit center to the existing trail in Tacoma Park, add a new bridge over Georgia Avenue, and run along Fenton Street. Earlier this year, County Executive Leggett announced his recommended fiscal year 2014 capital budget that includes $7.5 million to hasten the opening of the Silver Spring Transit Center. More information about the Transit Center and Hiker Biker Trails is available on the county's website at MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. We're working to keep you moving. The County Council's Education Committee met recently to discuss how the school system places students who are on the autism spectrum. Councilmember Phil Andrews requested a study earlier this year to improve the council's understanding and oversight of this special group of students. There are occasions where the school system and parents disagree about what should be in the uh, child's individual education plan for, um, for their uh, program. And the question that the committee uh, addressed or, or uh, discussed yesterday and heard from the school system and from parents and a special education attorney uh, is really who should bear that responsibility to uh, if it goes to court, uh, which is a last resort, uh, who should have to defend the plan? Uh, the school system is the one that develops the plan and ultimately approves it and can unilaterally approve it in Maryland. Uh, so um, uh, I think that it is incumbent upon the school system to defend uh, their proposal rather than, as is the case now, the parents having to show that the plan proved that the plan is not likely to provide some educational benefits. Not really a fair contest there. When we come back, a group of young Montgomery County women who are making a difference one strand at a time. We'll tell you more right after this short break. Stay with us. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County Government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. With winter weather causing all kinds of issues, now's the time to sign up for MC Alert. Receive college closing, delay, and emergency information via text message and email. The service also sends important information about Montgomery County weather and traffic events. The new Science Center on MC's Rockville campus has been recognized by the U.S. Green Building Council as one of the most significant leadership in energy and environmental design certified projects of the year. MC's construction management team placed third in the National Association of Home Builders Residential Construction Competition in the two-year college category. Competing against more than 50 teams, the students solved real-life construction management problems for a panel of residential construction industry experts. Welcome back. In order to function as happy and healthy adults, there are some things teens need to learn that take place after school hours. At one high school in Montgomery County, I met a group of young women who are not only learning a new skill, but lessons in life as well. 
These young women are making a difference one strand at a time. Hi, this is the sign and table for the sports academy we have inside. As part of the sports academy program at Wheaton High School, they have been creating wigs that will be donated to cancer patients. Okay, so I see lots of uh, young women here creating beautiful wigs. Tell me a little bit about this project and what you all are, are hoping and trying to do. We made wigs for women that could not afford them for breast cancer. Um, there's an organization that will be donating them to that they distribute throughout the metropolitan area so these all the young ladies made the wigs for that project for women with breast cancer. Twice a week the girls come to this classroom to comb, curl and fashion their wigs for some thankful recipient. You're doing something good for somebody else. How does that make you feel? I feel like everybody should have that moment when they can say, oh, I want to be beautiful just like everybody else. And I feel like helping cancer patients by making wigs for them is just like that uh, moment for them so they can feel like they're like everybody else and not feeling self-conscious about themselves. Well, this is actually the first time I've ever made a wig or thought about making a wig, but I just thought it would be really interesting to do something for someone other than myself. When she learned about how these young women were choosing to spend their time, Council President Nancy Navarro was inspired. Hello! Hi, how are you? <laughs> she commended the group on their work and told them about her sister who died from cancer and how having a wig gave her so much confidence as she went through treatment. You guys have no idea that the positive impact that this is going to have on so many women because it's really amazing. You don't think about it that much. It's like, oh, it's just hair, but it makes every, every difference to be able to put on a wig and put on your makeup and, you know, and look totally different. So what you guys are doing is extraordinary. You know, to see herself with hair again and to put makeup on and be able to go out and, you know, to celebrate Christmas with us, it makes such a difference. Oh, you want me to style? Navarro calls it a win-win for engaging youth. I, I do hair. Once in a while when my kids let me, it's the ends are always tougher. There is that link between this activity and academic achievement. That there is a link between having a positive experience after school and choosing to stay in school. So these investments pay off ten times fold. In our Pet of the Week segment, Kathy Stanhope has a spunky young female dog named Nave who might just be the pet you've been searching for. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And I am here with a very little live wire. Her name is Maeve. She's just about three years old. She is lively and adorable. And if you like a little dog that likes to pounce, this is the dog for you. The second you throw a ball at her or something bounces around, she goes pouncing after it. And she's just lots and lots of fun. She's a tiny little dog. If you're looking for somebody that, some little dog that wants to fit on your lap, this is she. She is wonderful. And I don't know if you can tell, but she's got the cutest little red cast to her coat. And she's got to have a little wire hair something in there. She's got medium long hair. And we think she's maybe a cross between a Yorkshire Terrier and a Maltese, something like that. We're not really sure. But like I said, she's lively. She's sweet. She is just lots of fun. And like you can see, she likes sitting on laps. So if you're looking for a cute young little dog, that wants to cuddle up with you one minute and wants to go play with you the next minute, Maeve is the dog for you. So remember, we get lots and lots of animals here. If you're looking for dogs, cats, chinchillas, bunnies, goats, anything, don't shop, adopt. Always contact your local shelter before you go looking for an animal because the chances are we have it. And if you're looking for a breed-specific dog, please contact the shelter. If you want a golden retriever, they can put you in touch with rescue groups that do goldens. If you want a poodle, they can do the same for any breed you are looking for. So always contact the shelter. Give us a call at 240-773-5967 or visit us on the web at mchumane.org. Well, that does it for this edition of County Report This Week. But remember, we do want to hear from you. Share your ideas on the county social media site, engage.montgomerycountymd.gov. A topic on the minds of many here in the county right now is transportation. And one subject folks are discussing, the county is considering several key transportation projects. Which is the most important and why? Feel free to give us your thoughts. I'm Susan Kennedy. Have a great week.